Hello, we are here at uh, Latin America Geospatial Forum where uh, concurrently the UNGGM Americas meeting has been happening. Uh, it's a great pleasure catching up with uh, Gregory Scott, Interregional Advisor, Global uh, Geospatial Information Management uh, from New York. It's a nice uh, not talking to you. Thank you. Thanks, Ibanu. It's nice to be here. The UN has recently adopted the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, what role uh, UNGGM is playing in evolving this and taking these forward? That's been a long process. No, you you're dead right. In fact, um, on the 25th of September at the, the UN summit, um, the, the new 2030 agenda for sustainable development was adopted by the General Assembly and all of the member states. And that's, that's a very important global policy agenda that we're going to see over the next 15 years. And while that's been negotiated to, to look at many, many aspects and global challenges, and an outcome of that being 17 new sustainable development goals with 169 associated targets. UNGGIM has worked pretty diligently over the last two years as the development agenda has evolved to ensure that member states and decision makers understand the need for using geospatial information, um, statistics, earth observations, and other data sources when it when it considers how it measures and monitors and tracks progress on the development agenda. So we've been very successful and lucky, I might add, in being able to, um, particularly to member states, leverage the need for geospatial information so that we actually have a specific reference now in the outcome document under, under paragraph 76 that specifically calls for the need for geospatial information and earth observations to help in measuring and monitoring, and particularly in, in regard to needing new, timely, quality and reliable data um, as we go into a, a very new development agenda with, with not only an aspect on, on the environment, but more on socio and economic challenges that we're seeing as well and the interrelationships between the environment and people and humanity. So a busy period of time. Has any indicator framework been uh, developed so that each of these goals, so that the, the SDG community which is working, the organizations and countries which are working on each of the sectors can actually start implementing and looking at the use of uh, geospatial information and technology? Yes, um, very much so and in fact one of, the, one of the processes that has also evolved in parallel with the Sustainable Development Goals has been what is known as a Global Indicator Framework. And this indicator framework is technical in orientation rather than being political or decision making. And that's under the mandate of the United Nations Statistical Commission. Primarily because a lot of the indicators that we used, for example, in the Millennium Development Goals were statistical in nature. They were about people, gender, populations, and understanding um, progress in those contexts. The new indicator framework that's been developed now by, um, this is a mouthful, it's the Interagency Expert Group on the SDGs, the IAEG SDGs. Um, that represents 28 member countries uh, from, from around the world and they have just concluded their second meeting and they're formulating an indicator framework at the moment tied to the 169 targets. Within those indicators there are aspects that will require inputs from the geospatial and earth observation community and so UNGGIM um, sits on that expert group um, led by, by Denmark as our country representative and is now formulating means to how geospatial fits into those indicators as well. And it will then be incumbent on, on our global geospatial community to look how we provide the data inputs into that measuring and monitoring of the indicators over the next 15 years. Is UNGGIM also working with other global initiatives like GEO in furthering this uh, uh, SDGs? Really good point and, and thank you for making that mention. Is we have actually, one of the big things about, about I guess, our community is, is that a lot of data that we derive comes from Earth observations. And from that, 
we use a lot of other geospatial information to start looking at analysis and modelling. We within UNGGIM have been working closely with the Group on Earth Observations and, and, and hence having this partnership even here in Mexico and the Geo Secretariat in particular to look at how we can articulate our, our combined needs um, and, and using our, our complementary strengths and relationships and, and means to influence um, this community. So that's worked very, very well. And in fact, we had a whole day side event at the, um, prior to the Geo Plenary earlier this week on looking at the Sustainable Development Goals, on looking at the indicator framework specifically from an Earth observation perspective. And one of the outcomes from that is how we continue to work together in terms of this measuring and monitoring over the next 15 years or so. So it's a very strong collaboration, but it's also a necessary one. When is this uh, indicator framework expected to take shape and uh, be available uh, for the uh, communities? It's in very advanced stages now. And in fact, one of the challenges that we've had with the whole sustainable development agenda is a short time frame. Obviously because implementation, implementation actually starts on the 1st of January 2016. Um, and so, so the indicator framework has been um, has is in its final stages. It still has work to do, but in essence, it will be endorsed by the Statistical Commission in March in New York in 2016, and then it will have a final endorsement by the General Assembly. So we're on a short period of time. Um, in essence, we really have to have it ready by by the end of January in 2016. Once this is adopted, uh, are there any initiatives or being planned by UNGGIM so that the, the outreach uh, is much better, so that the communities working on them can readily uh, get uh, an understanding of this? What's going to be important at the moment, we're very much preparing the indicators in terms of methodology um, and process. Once it's been agreed on and the indicators are finalised, we will then need to go into an implementation phase. And what that means is looking at our data in more detail, the types of data that in many instances are readily available, but a lot of data that needs to be either repurposed or has to be generated from scratch. And that will involve many challenges for a lot of countries, particularly developing countries because much of this data isn't necessarily already structured or available. Um, and so UNGGIM, along with our statistical partners, will have to work very closely in country, in member states, to provide guidance on, on process, on methods, and on the data and the inputs. We will have some time to do that. Um, we will have an annual reporting mechanism but that's not been fully determined yet. Um, that will go to, for example, the high-level political forum of the, of the General Assembly. We will have some time to work out the formalities and the processes of how we go about doing that. But in, in essence, we are now preparing countries to start thinking about the types of data we need to look at. So have UNGGM identified the nodal organisations within the countries to take further this uh, uh, SDGs? Primarily it sits in three spaces. One is obviously within the statistical organisations and the national statistical officers have primary carriage for delivering the official statistical data. Second to that is the geospatial organisations that will need to be able to provide and are looking forward to be able to provide many data inputs into that but it also is a bit cross-cutting into in, in a number of countries where they will also need to work with their environmental agencies or their meteorological agencies um, and other areas because of the fact that there's many different aspects to the to the the, uh, the development agenda it's very the one thing about this agenda unlike the MDGs it is very very broad and very cross-cutting um, it's very inclusive but it's very wide spectrum. So the 17 goals cover many, many things, you know, from climate specifically, through to poverty, through to cities and urbanization, um, water, and many other things in between. So as you can imagine, 
the data inputs to many of those will come from a, a variety of organisations within national governments. So you're hopeful of uh, furthering the agenda with much more aggressive framework uh, to work with all the countries? Yeah, that's true. And, and important to that too is, is one of the things that, uh, that we've been considering when we think about the data inputs there's still a lot of science that needs to go underneath this as well. Um, obviously policy is a key part of it, but the science and technology are key contributors to the process. So that means we have to be able to leverage you know, the, the broader community. We need to leverage the technology folks in the private sector with international organisations and academia. And the beauty that we have within UNGGIM is we, we have that community of practice already and so we will we will be calling on that some more I would suspect. Okay, fantastic. Uh, I wish you all the best for the huge task in hand. Thank you. Um, it's a huge task but I think it's uh, it's going to be a very fruitful one and we need to do it. Mm -hmm.